do like a little reporting. When you are solving these, I wish it would say solve for X or find the solution of X. I'm going to kind of do it the long way just right now. Um, we're going to add 3 over here, right? Because we're trying to get X by itself. So we have 6X. This is 0 out. 15 plus 3 is 18. Now remember, how do you get this 6 away from this X? Divide by 6, divide by 6. So that's going to be X equals 3. Yes, X equals 3. So the basic ones like this, great, easy to do. You can do it real quick. However, let's move to like this big dog right here. This big dog right here, it has parentheses, so we have to do parentheses first, yada, yada. Do you guys know the, the using the calculator how to do these? Because on the star, this is one that you can try to use your calculator to give you a solution. Um, if your solution is a whole number, it will be easy to find. So what you would have to do, sorry, dropped my calculator. What you would have to do is put this in your Y1, okay? Only this side. Put this side in your Y1. So we got 3X plus 2, parentheses. Are you working with your calculator right now? I'm hoping that you're putting this in the Y1. Because I want you to spend a little bit less time on these and more time on like those graphing ones, okay? So we put this part in the Y1, and then we'll put this one in the Y2, which is the next line. You guys know this trick already? You can use this trick when you are solving equations. I'm trying to find a solution for X. I'm trying to solve for X. Um, so after I put this side in the Y1, this side in the Y2, exactly, yes, with parentheses, I'm going to press second graph second graph, and I have a table, and what I'm looking for is if this is negative 47 and negative 7, nope, not my solution. Negative 38 and negative 3, not my solution. Negative 29, I'm looking for the Y1 and the Y2 to match. I need these two to be equivalent. Oh, there we go. You see that? So if I'm trying to solve for X, Yes, I wanted to see where the Y1 and Y2 were the same. They're both a 25. But did it ask me to solve for Y? No, it asked me to solve for X. So your answer or your solution is X equals 3. So you didn't really have to go through all of that that we did here. This is just like, there's only three terms here. Let's just solve it real quick. This one has a whole bunch of terms, lots of room for error, maybe if you're rushing. But it's like, hey, let me use that calculator and try it out. Okay? Got it? Um, I hope you remember this trick. We will be visiting this one again a day next week, okay? So that was number six. Are there any questions about that? No? Raise your hand if you have a question. Okay. So now let's, well, actually, there's only two, like, inequality problems here, which the inequality ones are a little bit different to solve. How about do number eight? Let's do number eight. I know you guys, when you see decimals and stuff, it makes you scared. Nope. Let's try to use our calculator again and see if it can help us. Sometimes when you see decimals, you might get a decimal answer. So go ahead and do that same thing. I'm going to solve it out just so I can see what the answer is. But you should be working on number eight. Sorry, my paper sliding down. Oh, no, that's easy. Giving you a second. Okay, yeah, I think this one is going to work out. So I have put, hopefully, you have put the 1.2 plus 0.4 x in there in the y1. If you need to see that again, that goes in the y1. This side goes in the y2. 0 0.8 parentheses x plus 1 press second graph remember we're looking for when these two are when the y1 and y2 are equal we found our x solution you see it which is 1 okay 
So those are kind of like the easy ones. If you see it in there, it's great. It's easy. Cool. You got to an answer. Sometimes it doesn't work out in here because your X is a decimal or a fraction. And we'll talk about how to do those in a couple days, okay? So let's look at numbers. Um, actually, let's do number three first. Number three does have an inequality. If you're good at solving equations, then yes, you do want to um, go ahead and solve it out. I need to get my x's over here. We got minus 2. This is positive 2. I want to do the opposite and move it over here. Um, what I usually tell my students is to get all the x's on the left side. If you do it a little different, but you get the same answer, that's fine. Okay. This will zero out. This is negative 5x combined with a negative 2x. So that will give you a negative 7x. And then bring this stuff down. Bring the inequality down. Uh, you still solve it the same way, even though it has an inequality. So now I want to combine, I want to do the opposite of the negative 2, add 2, add 2 over here. That will zero out. We got negative 7x. We got less than or equal to 7. And remember, this is the part where if you divide it by a negative, Only since this negative 7 is at the bottom, what's going to happen with this inequality? It's going to flip to the, it's going to like turn. If it was less than, it will become greater than, greater than, become less than. And then 7 divided by negative 7, you cannot ask nobody if you're taking star. So put it in the calculator. Positive divided by negatives. I know some people are like, oh, miss, I forgot. And I'm like, well, use your calculator. Okay. So this will be our um, answer x is greater than or equal to negative 1, okay? If you are not good at solving these, yes, you can still use the um, calculator trick like we did with the other ones. So in the y1, you would put this, which is the first half. In the y2, you would put your 2x plus 5, okay? And then after you press second graph, you will find that x equals 1. I'm sorry, x equals negative 1. Okay? The only thing you will be missing is the inequality. But remember, this is the star exam. The star exam is going to have multiple choice. So if you had a, like if it said x is less than or equal to negative 5, b, x is less than or equal to negative 1, c, x is greater than or equal to negative 5, and then d, x is greater than or equal to negative 1, at least you know it should not be A and C. So now it's like, well, I hope you're lucky because if I couldn't solve it out, I at least know that it should have a negative 1 in the answer. If you can solve it, you will know that it's this answer. But hey, at least you can eliminate two things instead of answering just like a blind guess, I call it. All right? Any questions about that? Sorry, this is the end of this video. I'm stopping that one. Cool.